One morning, four-year-old Sophia woke to find her mother still in bed. This was extremely unusual for her because her mother always got up before her. Nothing worked when she tried to wake up her mom. Sophie began to wonder if something was wrong as the hours passed and her mother was still sound asleep, so she dialed the only number she could remember. She only knew this number because her mother had instructed her to memorize it in case of an emergency. She paused before responding as tears started to well up in her eyes. Sophie told the operator, My mommy has been sleeping all day. As she spoke into the phone, her heart was pounding with anxiety. When he heard a young child on the other end of the 911 call, the operator was shocked. As soon as he had a good idea of the situation, he dispatched police and an ambulance to her address. However, the police found that entering the apartment complex was more challenging than they had anticipated when they arrived. Time seemed to pass by slowly for everyone involved. They soon became aware that they could only do one thing to enter the apartment, but when the police were finally allowed inside, they were horrified to see what they did. What shocked the officers? What had Sophie's mother been up to? And would she recover? Only Sophie and her mother Hannah lived in the apartment. Sophie was only four years old. Sophie's dad had never been in the picture. As soon as Hannah informed him of her pregnancy, he left her to raise their daughter on her own. But she didn't miss him. Sophie was always well taken care of and Hannah would have done anything for her. Their favorite part of the day was the morning. After waking up and eating breakfast as a family, Hannah would put on music and dance in the kitchen with her daughter. Hannah would then leave for work and Sophie would go to daycare. But Sophie immediately recognized that today was different. As soon as Sophie woke up, she noticed her mother was different. She could hardly open her eyes and wasn't her usual cheerful self. In her normal behavior, Hannah would shut off the alarm on its first ring, but she had not moved a muscle since it went off. Sophie got up to turn it off instead. Sophie looked at her mother while standing next to her bed. She must be extremely tired, Sophie thought. She wasn't old enough to comprehend how seriously wrong something could be. Sophie decided to get dressed and head to the living room on her own. She was hoping her mother would soon follow her, but she never did. While the minutes passed, Sophie's mother remained in bed asleep. The TV was on, and Sophie started watching her typical morning shows. But eventually, she felt a growling in her stomach. What kept her mother from getting up and dancing in the kitchen with her? She then made the decision to check on her again. Sophie slowly opened the door to her mother's bedroom. Mom, she asked worriedly. Mom, are you awake yet? I'm hungry. But there came no response. She carefully walked over to the bed and climbed on top. Mommy, she said again while shaking her mother's shoulders. She now began to feel really worried. Her mother did not respond. Sophie's heart began to race. Panic arose in her body, and tears started to well up in her eyes. She felt helpless and didn't know what to do. But by now, she knew something strange was happening, and she needed to find help. Her mother had told her about a number she could call if something were wrong. She had no idea who this person was, but that didn't matter at that moment. She ran downstairs and grabbed the phone. She had to think very hard about the number, but eventually figured it out. 911, she dialed with trembling fingers. She held the phone by her ear and ran back to he mother. Don't worry, mommy, she said. I will get you some help. 911, what's your emergency? A man asked her. Uh, my mommy has been asleep all day, she said. He tried to keep her calm. The man on the other line seemed to be surprised by Sophie's voice. What's your name, darling? He asked her kindly. Sophie, Sophie said confidently. Can you come and help me? You said your mommy is asleep all day? Is your daddy around, Sophie? The man asked, not reacting to Sophie's question. No, Sophie said. It's just my mommy and me. But she never woke up this morning. All right, Sophie, I need you to stay on the line, okay? The operator said. Where is your mommy now? She's in bed in her room. All right, darling, you're doing really well. Do you know where you live? He asked. Sophie told the operator her address and waited. She stayed on the line with the operator the whole time and answered all his questions. He asked her if her mother was hurt, if she was breathing, and other important questions but it was taking a very long time for the ambulance to arrive. She was only four years old, so Sophie had no track of time. 
but even she could sense that the ambulance should have been here by now. But she didn't even hear the sirens yet. She was still by her mother's side and told her reassuring words, not knowing if her mother could hear her or not. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, Sophie heard the sirens. She ran to the living room to wait for them to arrive. She could hear heavy footsteps running up the stairs of their apartment building and stopping in front of their door. Sophie? One of the men yelled. I'm in here, she answered. Sophie's heart was pounding in her chest. She had never experienced something like this before. Sophie, we need you to open the door for us. Someone yelled from the other side of the door. But that wasn't as easy as they thought. Sophie was way too small to reach the door handle. She tried to stand on her toes to reach the handle, but she could only touch it with her fingertips. I can't reach it, Sophie said. But she wasn't about to give up. She knew she had to open the door for those men. Otherwise, they could never help her mother. There was a little black box in the middle of the dining table. So Sophie climbed on top and put the box in front of the door. She stepped on it and tried again, but she was still too small. There had to be something she could use, she thought. And suddenly, it dawned on her. A chair, of course. Why didn't she think of that before? Sophie quickly ran back to the table and grabbed the chair. But it was way too heavy for her to lift up. She tried tugging it toward the door, but the chair got caught on a rug and slowly began to tilt. Because the chair began to tilt, Sophie tripped. She fell on the ground face first and couldn't turn around fast enough to see that the chair was slowly leaning her way. And before she knew it, the chair fell on top of her. Sophie screamed as the hard wooden chair trapped her on the ground. Luckily, she wasn't hurt, but she couldn't get up. The chair was too heavy for her to lift. She tried to get on her hands and knees and push the chair up with her back, but she couldn't. Sophie, are you okay? The man asked her. They could hear the rumbling noises and Sophie's screams through the door. I'm stuck, Sophie cried out. She felt devastated. Her mother was still asleep in the room, and all she wanted was to help her. And now she was stuck under a chair, and there was no way of her opening the door from under there. But little did she know, there was one more way the men could enter her house. The police knew what to do next. Don't worry, Sophie. We will be with you in a few minutes. One of the officers yelled through the door. But Sophie couldn't help but feel panicked. How were the officers going to enter her house if the door was locked? But then she heard something. She heard the police officers mumbling outside of the door, and it almost sounded like a few of them were walking down the stairs again. Sophie's little mind instantly feared they had given up and were about to leave her. But of course, that was far from true. Please don't leave me, she cried. We won't leave you, darling. An officer responded. We're just grabbing a few supplies from downstairs. Hold on tight and don't be scared. You will hear a loud bang in a couple of seconds. Sophie listened carefully and tried to stay as calm as possible. All right, Sophie, a second officer said. Cover your ears. Sophie closed her eyes and put her hands over her ears. She had no idea what was going to happen next, but she trusted the officers. Her heart was beating in her chest, and suddenly, the officers started counting down from three to one. What were they going to do? Sophie wondered. Three, two, one. A loud blow echoed through the living room. Sophie felt the floor shake a little. She was just about to lift her hands off her ears when another blow echoed through the apartment. Sophie wanted to see what they were trying to do, so she carefully opened one eye. She heard a third blow and could see the door move a little. Then she realized they were trying to break down the door with something. A fourth blow was slammed against the door, and she could now see splitters flying off. Sophie quickly closed her eyes again and waited for it all to be over. But suddenly, the blows stopped. Sophie opened her eyes and was worried to see the door was still in its place. Why did they stop? Well, breaking the door down didn't seem to work, so the police had to think of another way. Sophie could hear the police speak to each other, but it didn't sound good. She heard rumbling noises, and they were clearly trying lots of things to get inside. But it was taking way too long for Sophie. So she decided to take matters into her own hands. She was done being trapped on the floor and wanted to help her mother. So she carefully looked around her. Suddenly, Sophie noticed that the legs of the chair were still on the rug that had tripped over. 
she reached with her arm to see if she could get her fingers in between the chair and the carpet. And to her surprise, it worked. Sophie took a deep breath, because she knew the next part would be very difficult. Sophie had to muster up all her strength to push the leg away. It hadn't worked before, but she didn't want to give up. She figured the chair only had to move a small bit for her to be able to crawl away. So she counted down in her head and gave the chair one big push. To Sophie's surprise, the chair began to move, and Sophie was finally able to crawl away. She cheered herself on and was so proud of herself for pushing through. She immediately ran to her mother to tell her what she had accomplished but was painfully reminded that she was still sleeping. Then, all of a sudden, Sophie heard a loud bang. She ran to the living room to see if the police were finally able to come inside, and they were. Sophie ran into the arms of one of the officers and quickly led them to her mother. Within seconds, their apartment was filled with police officers and paramedics. But none of them seemed happy. The officers looked around them with shocked looks on their faces, and the paramedics put her mother onto a stretcher. Sophie didn't understand why everyone seemed to be in such a hurry to get out of this room. But she would later find out the truth. They put Sophie and her mother into an ambulance, and they drove to the nearest hospital. Sophie knew her mother would be well cared for, but she still wondered why the police were so shocked when they entered their house. She knew she made a bit of a mess, but it wasn't that bad, was it? But little did she know it wasn't about the mess at all. There was something else inside their apartment that explained everything, but Sophie was too young to understand. She had to wait for her mother to wake up, and only then would the police explain everything as well as they could. At the hospital, they hooked Sophie's mother onto various machines, which looked terrifying to Sophie. She had no idea what the machines were for. Luckily, Sophie's grandmother arrived soon after. They had contacted her about what had happened and asked her to come. Sophie was ecstatic to see a familiar face after such a hectic day. She ran to her grandmother, snuggled up in her arms, and told her everything. It didn't seem to get any better with Hannah for a while, but after a few hours, she slowly began to wake up. Hannah moved her head from side to side and slowly opened her eyes. She was very confused about what had happened and didn't realize she was in a hospital at first. But Sophie told her proudly how brave she had been all day and that she was the one who called 911. Shortly after Hannah woke up, police entered her room. They began to ask her what had happened, but Hannah had no idea. She went to bed feeling a bit sick, but the rest was all very blurry. The officers looked very serious and wrote everything down. But then, they finally explained everything. When the officers were finally able to get inside the apartment, they immediately noticed something. There was a specific smell lingering around, but they didn't connect it to anything yet. But as soon as they entered Hannah's bedroom, they were shocked to realize the smell had worsened and probably had come from there. They immediately investigated the situation and found mold growing behind the bed, behind the closet, and in some corners of the ceiling. The mold was slowly spreading throughout the house and was probably the reason why Hannah was so sick and drowsy. The mold was toxic, and if Sophie hadn't called 911, it could have ended badly for them both. Hannah was so proud of her daughter for handling the situation so well. She felt stupid for not noticing the problem sooner. Sophie was also checked for any symptoms, but luckily for her, she was perfectly healthy. The doctors don't know why the mold only infected Hannah and not Sophie, but they were happy it hadn't spread to both of them. As soon as Hannah started to feel better, she called the concierge of the building to explain the situation. There was no way they would go back there if there were still mold inside. The owner of the apartment building was shocked to hear something like this had happened and immediately checked the other apartments for mold as well. It turned out that there was a large mold outbreak in the building and every apartment had to be evacuated and cleaned. It was a big process that took several weeks to be finished. Everyone in the building was shocked that this had happened and sent their good wishes to Hannah and Sophie. Sophie was forever changed after this eventful day, but in a positive way. She felt more confident in who she was and more independent as well. She was very proud that she had saved her mother. The mold never returned to their apartment, and Sophie grew up to become a paramedic herself and continue to save lives. The events of this story are entirely fictional and are products of the author's imagination.
Images included are meant for illustration purposes only. Any resemblance to actual events, places or persons, living or dead, are entirely coincidental.